Hi there, uh, I'm Rob Brockman and uh, today I'm going to take you through uh, a sort of the scoring and interpretation of the schema mode inventory. Okay, now just a reminder about the schema mode inventory or the SMI as you might um, call it. Uh, SMI has been validated, uh, it's a 124-item uh, self-report questionnaire that can be given to patients. Um, and has been shown to have good psychometric properties for measuring 14 of the most prominent schema modes. Okay, uh, now I'll talk about its weaknesses a little bit um, at the end, but for now I think let's just get straight in and, and, and figure out how to score this thing up. Okay, now if you have a look here, uh, you can see that this is um, an SMI uh, scoring template. All right, so you'll need You'll need a scoring template such as this. Again, there's a, there's a few of these going around. Uh, this is the one that I use um, the most. Now you notice a few features of it. Um, you see the 124 questions along the top here. All right, so this is this is the item number, and then you're going to put your answers in here. All right, so you, you're starting on the left hand side with uh, question one, and you're going to plug in whatever it might be. Now I tend to use the tab. All right. Um, here, so, you, so you're going to put, let's say I'm going to put a four in here, all right, and then the tab button will bring you across to the next item. I'll put, say, a five in here, tab, six, tab, one, okay, tab. That will bring you across sort of all the way. So we, we're filling them out. Oh, so you can see here I made a mistake, and be careful not to make that mistake. I put a 36 in there, so I didn't press tab. That's meant to be three, okay, so we can tab, tab, tab will bring you along all the way through to 124. Now, once you've uh, filled in all of the items for your uh, for your patient, you, you can then ha have a look at the spread. Okay, you can see here you've got all the, the, the sort of um, fourteen modes that we're measuring with this particular uh, questionnaire, starting with the vulnerable child. This is a, a angry child mode. What's called enraged child, uh, impulsive child, undisciplined child. Uh, what's called happy child. You see that's a kind of reverse scored one as a, as a positive mode. Uh, compliance surrenderer. Here we've got the detached protector. We've got the detached self-soother. So we've got none going on there, uh, or showing up on the questionnaire at least for this person. Self-aggrandizer. Okay. Bullying attack. Uh, punitive parent. Demanding parent mode. And healthy adult. All right. So you can see here going across. Now I think some notable omissions, into, like clinically, all right, that um, it's a little bit of a shame at the moment. We don't have um, sort of mode scales for perfectionist over controller mode um, or indeed other modes that are fairly common like avoidant protector um, uh, and maybe even something like an angry protector, which are relatively common modes um, that you're going to be working with. So, OK, that's what we have. We, we, you know, this particular scale will pick up really the central modes all right but just be aware that it's not going to necessarily pick up all of them okay now you can see here in terms of in interpreting things all right we've got sort of four categories that have been broken down for us based upon um, the studies okay now average mean what means a sort of um, non-clinical population all right what the average mode score for people in, in a non-clinical sample Moderate mean, means the kind of average for each mode that has been found in the studies for Axis 1 uh, patients who don't have a personality disorder but they present with some kind of other Axis 1 problem such as depression. The third category here, which is high, corresponds to um, Axis 1 patients, the, the sort of average that, that was found in, in the validation studies for patients that had at least one personality disorder. This is the means, and then very high, uh, sort of meaning people with maybe very severe personality disorders or very severe psychopathology. Okay, it's going across here. So you can see for the negative modes, like vulnerable child, angry child, enraged child, etc., we're going from sort of low all the way up, higher scores. Okay, and you can see reverse scored for the positive modes of uh, happy child and healthy adult. All right, we uh, average p uh, people having higher scores on the positive modes, okay, and then th those averages coming down as we get into a very high range in, in terms of pathology, all right, what we might expect in the population. So 
So you can see here in this particular case, we're looking at someone uh, with uh, vulnerable child mode. The client average is 2.2, all right, and which puts them in a range probably more consistent with an Axis 1 patient, not really hitting that sort of high range that you might expect with someone with more of a personality disorder. So that's a little bit of information there for you. There seems to be some vulnerability there, but it doesn't seem to be as high. Um, here you've got angry child mode. You can see 1.8, more consistent with a normal population. All right, uh, enraged child here. Um, it's coming up here as, a, as again, probably consistent with a normal population. Uh, impulsive child, and we're hitting into more moderate levels here. All right, undisciplined child, a bit over moderate, so a bit, a bit somewhere, say, between uh, axis one and axis two. Happy child mode. Okay, so this is how this is how, now in this case, I mean, this is a kind of dummy case, all right? You can see that bullying attack, if we go over here somewhere, quite high, all right? Consistent more with uh, a personality disorder. So I'd, I'd certainly be thinking about bullying attack as being maybe one of the characteristic modes of this person. Um, also, punitive parent mode, uh, consistent with a personality disorder, so quite high, all right? 2.7 versus 2.75, so again, definitely one to follow up on over there. So, I mean, this is how I tend to use it. Um, when, when I use the SMI, I'm trying to see, you know, what kind of a range people are in. Are they, are the modes being reported as, as more consistent with a normal population, access one, access two, very severe, all right? And of course, for those that are showing up as kind of very, on the very severe range, um, in this case, the only one would be the happy, uh, no, in fact, that, that's reverse score, that's fine. You know, there's nothing very severe coming up here. Um, but, so you can see how we're sort of thinking about this, all right? Those that are coming up uh, very, you know, the high to very high range are probably going to, you know, be feeding into our formulation in terms of being um, prominent modes for that person, yeah? In this case, the ones that I'm really interested in uh, are the punitive parent at the moment and the bullied attack are very prominent. Um, and maybe if you came across here, something like compliant surrenderer. So that's m broadly consistent with someone with a personality disorder, the high range. Okay. Um, okay. And again, you can see undisciplined child here. Again, maybe we'll be looking at that. So this is, this is the main interpretation of... Um, of the schema mode inventory. We're going to use it there to have a look at what range people are in. All right. Are they in a range um, that's more consistent with a personality disorder um, versus versus more normal population or is it somewhere in between? Okay. And this is going to um, feed into our formulation, also feed our questioning because, of course, if people are coming back f relatively flared up on uh, a particular mode, we're going to go back to the patient and check in with them about that particular mode and, and whether or not that fits the overall clinical picture given the other sources of information. Okay. So um, now the other thing I guess I wanted to quickly talk about is two things. So, so yeah, remembering that the, the, the mode assessment uh, has to be done in the context of triangulating all of the assessment information. Okay. We're not going to over, you can see here, you know, the, the different assessment methods, um, questionnaires are, are but one assessment method and the SMIs, um, one particular questionnaire that you can use. So don't overemphasize again questionnaires, but it is um, and a potentially important source of data. Um, I particularly find that SMI is, is quite a good one for people newer to schema therapy when they don't have a really strong mode fluency yet. Uh, it can sort of help pick up modes that you might not otherwise um, have realized. And it can also sort of help you learn the modes because questionnaire kind of tells you, yep, there should be that particular mode, let's say a bullying attack. And then when you go back and question the patient, they might say, oh, yeah, like, you know, when I find myself in these situations, I do have like, a, you know, become violent or I can uh, become quite angry or like a bully or something like that. So that kind of also helps you build up your knowledge of the schemas, uh, sorry, of the modes in this case. Um, all right, so that they're sort of main things. Now, the other thing I wanted to quickly um, go through again is just remembering um, while we marry, we're going to marry that questionnaire data, right, using the other assessment methods. 
Um, the mode assessment is also driven by, in particular, ab about what's happening in your sessions and in those moments where you can observe the patients. So the key question should be in, in driving your mode assessment uh, within the sessions, uh, what mode could this be? You know, what's going on right now? What mode could this be? And this will be a key question. If you become a, a schema therapist, um, you're constantly sort of tracking, you know, what mode are they in right now? Okay, they're saying this to me. They're doing this, That you know. Uh, so what mode could this be? What, what state are they in right now? What part of them is, um, is saying this to me? What part of them, you know, doesn't want to do the therapy or what part of them is giving resistance within the therapy or, or that kind of thing? So, um, and again, a few things just quickly about the mode assessment. We're talking about um, triangulating the, the verbal cues, all right? So breaking it down, what, what, what is the patient actually saying to you? What are the verbal cues that they're saying? You know, are they, are they saying things consistent with vulnerability? Uh, you know, like you weren't there for me or that kind of stuff or no one cares or, or are, they, are they coming across with quite harsh sort of critic type material like I'm nothing and I'm crap and I'm hopeless and I'm, you know, a piece of crap and I'm not worth it, right? So that, that kind of um, verbal cues will give you some idea as to the potential modes, but it's not enough. We're also going to need the nonverbal cues, all right? In particular, we're going to uh, pay attention to the tone of voice, all right? For sort of facial cues, that kind of thing, all right? Uh, to tell us about, um, you know, what mode they could be in. In particular, give us some clues as to the emotions that might be um, activated at the moment. Right? Is, is this someone who look, appears to be angry, vulnerable, or very flat and not actually experiencing much feelings at all? Um, so this is going to give us more information. And related to that is the last thing is the process information. So okay, so we also want to pay attention to how we're feeling in the room as well. You know, what, what, how does the patient in these interactions make us feel? All right, from time to time you might find that there's something important in there too for the mode assessment. All right, so you know if you're something that I often find if you're feeling, uh, let's say, kind of really quite bored. Or, or even sort of uh, even noticing yourself getting tired in the session or something like that and bored, sort of a bit flat yourself. Um, it could be actually that the patient is in a, in a detached protector, that themselves feeling flat and bored and a bit disconnected. And sometimes that can come through uh, in the transference. Okay, so, uh, and again, if you're feeling, let's say you're feeling scared or bullied, you know, in, in the interaction, um, it could be perhaps that um, the patient could be in, in a bullying attack mode. So pay attention to those cues also within, within yourself. Okay, so um, look, I trust that this has been um, uh, hopefully an interesting uh, sort of overview of the SMI. All right, again, uh, can be a useful tool um, to, to, to understand the modes of our patients. Don't overemphasize it. Use triangulation of all the assessment methods and in particular in your mode assessment. Um, check on the verbal, non-verbal cues and process information in triangulating that data. Okay, thanks, thanks for, uh, for watching.